skin here with me. This ain't a diss song, but um, yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. I'm a cheese head, y'all niggas cheese whiz. Pittsburgh Steelers, that's nothing. That Super Bowl ring. When I grew up, the Packers weren't very good. And then young Brett Favre comes in and starts just running around, throwing the ball everywhere and creating these incredible plays that you just wanted to watch. Holy cow, it was zeroed in with two defenders around the receiver. I'll tell you, Jim, this Brett Favre is something else. And then free agency started and they got Reggie White. And now you have, you know, maybe the most dominant defensive player and the best offensive player in the game on one team. I love you, man. No, I really love you. They had all sorts of just really interesting, great personalities on that team, and it made it to be an easy team to fall in love with. I'm gonna wear those for you. Special team score, defense score, offense score. You can't ask for much more than that. Perfect. The moment I think about when I think about that team is winning the NFC championship in Lambeau Field. There's a fade, it's there. Touchdown on Tony Freeman. A little fade down and out by Freeman and a perfect throw by Brent Favre. This was something people said would never happen again, that the Packers were the worst team in football. But here we are, we beat Carolina for the right to go to the Super Bowl. He's got time. He's throwing it downfield. He's There's got him. Wide open. When Brett Favre played in that Super Bowl, you saw how excited he was. It is going to be a touchdown to Andre Eisen. He takes his helmet off and he runs after he throws the touchdown. It's just his love for the game. Look at Brett Favre coming off the field. He is so happy. That's what makes football amazing. The Vince Lombardi Trophy is coming home where it started. This trophy, as important as it is to any other team and any other player, it means more us. One of my favorite Reggie White story. We're out. At, we're out in, in, in practice here, uh, right outside the Hudson Center. And John Yurkovic, who's a good friend, does radio down in Chicago. Was a D lineman for us. Uh, his brother was a lineman at Notre Dame, and we had picked him up. And this was his rookie season, so he's trying to make the team. His name was Mirko Mirko Yurkovic, um, and he's he's playing. I'm sure, you make fun of him. Well, <laughs> after this, we did. But he's blocking against Reggie in practice. Well, you know, Reggie's not going – none of the guys really gave it their best effort in practice. I mean, you didn't want Reggie to give it his best effort. It would disrupt practice too much. So he's kind of – and he's never going to hit the quarterback. And he kind of rushes in, and, and Mirko grabs him and kind of pulls him down. And Reggie said, hey, Mirko, quit the holding. Mirko says, hey, F you, Reggie. <laughs> Mirko's a Chicago kid, you know, kind of brash. You know, and Reggie ain't nothing. Hey, hey, F you, Reggie. Okay. <laughs> so I'm standing back in the back. I'm like, this is not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie digs in, gets it, you know, and, and it said, hut. And he... He clubbed Mirko, and it was a domino effect, and all five guys just <laughs> fell down. I mean, it, I it was it. horrible. And Reggie it. says, now God loves you, Mirko. <laughs> <laughs> but don't ever hold me again. <laughs> and he never held him he again. Never held again. Some of the best stuff in the whole, I mean, honestly. Some of the best stuff ever, the Packers and 49ers and the games and the people and just seeing 
Brett and Mike and Ray and Andy and all across the field, all my friends, and now, you know, you know, it was much easier to play people that you hated, you know? <laughs> it was much harder to play people that you loved. And so it was always something that, um, you know, it was always a handshake at the end and something big was happening. When the 40 meters in the back, it was always big. exciting. Something big was going on and it was always fun to do. And so. Third down, four from the 43. I got to see this. This far about here. Red ball. Far. Lays it up for Freeman and it's incomplete. It, or did he can't make the catch at the 15? Even to this day, you'll see a t-shirt and it's got a picture of Freeman in the end zone and the caption says, he did what? He did what? But he did what? Explain what took place on that play. Exactly. And I'm still saying it. The best thing that happened on that play was I made an awful throw. The ball had gotten wet. Frank Winter saying the ball's wet, wants a dry ball. Between the time they stopped the game to bring in another ball, Antonio and I had exchanged a couple of like looks that we were going to do a, a sluggo, a slant go. Hey, sluggo, promise you. Well, they changed the defense, and sluggo was not a good play. When I realized that they were in an inside leverage position, I kind of tried to pull the ball back. It was a little slick, and it came out of my hand funny, and it was an awful wounded duck throw. Dishman had a shot to it, but it sort of looked like he caught it. But I'm like, there's no way. You couldn't film that scene in a movie and make it look that good. It was so unbelievable that I still watch it and go, I can't believe that this guy caught this.